The following is a brilliant game by Steinitz. It's from 1895. Steinitz v. von Bardiblen. There's Yoko Piano. So this is the start of the Joko Piano. Now nowadays the main line is ninety four, which is a better move. Bishop E seven question mark. White now carries out a series of exchanges to keep up the pressure on the e-file and to keep black from castling. It's, it seems very simple, but it's very complicated at the same time. But seeing these examples will give you a much better instinct for how to go about looking into the position, and also you'll, you'll get a good sense of when to try to look for the attack on the uncastled king. I would imagine if you're watching these lectures it would be there would be many opportunities in your games to take advantage of the light castling of beginners. So black cat castle cuz the knight will hang. Um one other line is queen d7. And white can play queen e2. So black's idea is to artificially castle with king f7, moving the rook to e8 and king g8. This also limits the knight from moving on f3. So this was when there was much less theory about these lines, so the mistakes are more understandable. That's how we get to the better theory. C6, question mark. King D8 would have been a better move. And C6 doesn't prevent this move D5. And the point of this move, you might want to try to guess. Okay, I'll tell you, it's to um, get d4 for the knight. So c takes d5, knight to d4. So material is much less important when you have the initiative. King f7. So white was threatening something like rook c7, which would be completely destructive. Let's say black played a nothing move here, here, check, and white's going to have a winning attack here. Something like this doesn't work. You can see, see that this move threatens rook h3 mate. So rook c8. So these positions are all going to be very unclear in a lot of ways, and I'm not going through all the moves. And the book goes through even less moves than I'm going through, but I think it's really good practice to analyze these positions and say, what about this defense or this? because it will help your tactics a lot. Queen g4 threatening mating attack on g7. Now knight g5 check, exclaim. So this is a really good combination. Check.
Okay, so if queen takes Another option is king takes. So you always look at this in chess. Whenever you're looking at a rook sacrifice, it should be instinct to look at bringing the other rook over check. I've had this in a game. It's just a good way to play. When you're calculating to look at the bringing the other rook over check. So what about here? Check check with the rook and the queen's lost. What about here? Take the queen. Okay. King c7 or rook c5 and rook e6 check is destructive. So in the game, black plays king f8 because of the mate possibility on c1. It's not so simple just to take the queen. Check. So now if queen takes, then the rook takes, takes, and white's winning. King g8 again. Rook g7 check, exclaim. So the rook can't be taken by the king because then the queen takes with check and black doesn't have the back rank mate. And if queen takes, check. Again. Rook takes h7 and game over. At this point, Stein's opponents just got up and left, so this was a way of resigning. So we can analyze what will happen. And now, check, check. Sorry. Check. So I'm sure this was calculated by both sides. And it was clear the game was over. So there's one one defense that we could have looked at that black could have equalized with. I move 16, and that was king f7. But white could have gained the advantage. With rook a1, rook sorry, rook d1. So this was a good game because this brilliant move d5 is an excellent way of showing how to bring all your pieces into the position. And Steinitz was a great tactician.